So this is not a review of Starlink, but we did have a few comments when you know I did a few videos about you know Starlink not working for us, and we're facing the Northeast here. So one of the comments was just put a pole, a big pole up there, you know, in the air, and go over the tree line. And the guy said, "Don't cut trees for satellites." that's not what you do another person said why are you cutting trees on the north and east and west or whatever side one you're pointed at the northeast the satellite you know is kind of angled that way um another one said why even install a satellite dish with trees around you so we were looking at a video of a guy that put his Starlink dish, you know, it was somewhere up north. I don't know if it was Canada or somewhere in a really wooded area. He, and in the app, there's a way to, where you can kind of scan the sky with your camera phone, your iPhone or Android or whatever, and it'll tell you if it's obstructed or not. He did that, he said it was obstructed, but, you know, and he thought he was gonna put, have to cut a, trees down, but he installed it without cutting any or many trees down. And he said he got, you know, a really reliable, stable signal despite the trees. You know, it's probably because of the angle or something. But uh, it, it made me say, okay, well, maybe it'll work for us. So that that is why we opted to try it despite, you know, not a super clear view of the sky. So right there is the north, and we're gonna kind of scan down to the south right there. All right. So there is a nice little open area between, you know, the uh, east and west side, and a little bit of obstruction in the north, and a lot of obstructions here in the northeast. So let's tackle why we would cut trees in the north, or possibly east and west, or southeast, southwest. So you get, there's an obstruction map on the Starlink app, at least on the one for the iPhone, and it shows up red dots wherever there's an obstruction. It takes about 12 hours to get a good uh, view of the sky, I guess, where they, it's, it fills in in little dots, and those dots will widen out over time, and uh, the dots showed up on the southeast here on the southwest here with these red maples and everything else so you know these satellites aren't stationary they go about seventeen thousand miles an hour and they you know go they rotate the uh you know around the earth you know about every 90 minutes and there are about 5700 active satellites right now in starlink and they plan to have around 12,000 launched you know with the possible expansion of like 42,000 in the future so we cut most of the obstructions here on the north side that we're, we're showing up as red dots and that actually stabilized the signal a lot more than it did than it was you know beforehand and even though you probably can't see on the northeast side we cut probably five seven thirty to forty foot crepe myrtles you know these are the crepe myrtles in here and then there's a a uh, red maple right there and then a couple oaks and then we go back to the southeast side here where the, the red maples are. So, as I was saying, the satellites move and this it doesn't stay stationary. So, you know, even though the, the dish is pointing northeast, it faces, it, it, you know, it aims at a lot of, uh, of the sky. You know, the satellites move, it tracks the satellites. And I think at least with the Gen 3 dish that I had, it, it is capable of changing satellites every 15 seconds. So if there, there's an obstruction, it could change to a different satellite that's rotating yes. the Earth. Cutting trees in the north helped. Cutting uh, some of those trees in the northeast helped, even though it looks similar or, you know, you may not be able to tell at all that things have been cut. There, the density of leaves and limbs and, you know, trees up there is less. And we plan to do more over time, but we were on a limit of, uh, you know, a 30 day trial, you know, and we really didn't have the funds to put, uh, you know, to, to put a tower up right next to the property. You have like a 150 foot uh, cable, you know, size limit. So even though I got a 80 foot tower, you know, away from us, you know, the 
power over ethernet and all would just it would just lose power and we'd have to kind of jerry-rig some kind of weird frankenstein thing you know cable out to try to power the ethernet you know up an 80 foot tower what you know 150 foot away from the house so and then you still have to worry about running it you know underneath or over top of the roof or whatever uh, so that takes a lot more cable it would probably need like 225 feet of cable to get to where we wanted it to be. Starlink dish is not like the traditional satellite dishes, C-band, KU-band and stuff like that of the past where you're facing one or, you know, if you have like a multi LNB or LNC or LNA or whatever system, you're not just, you know, aiming at two or five satellites. You're, you're always moving. You're all, the satellites are always moving. You're always aiming in different directions i guess to to catch the satellites as they pass through i think that answers everybody's comments and questions you know the aiming of it you know cutting trees in different directions because they're obstructed it's showing on the app that, that these these little trees and stuff are obstructed and why and you know it answers the the question or comment why put you know the dish up where there's trees at all around and that was answered by it works for some people it probably is, you know, location dependent, you know, how tall the trees are, how far away, probably angles and all that stuff. And then, you know, and, you know, just a pole or a tower, just we didn't have time on the trial to do that. And we didn't really have the funds to just set it up and just experiment, you know, or we would have been out, you know, seven or eight hundred bucks. Anyway, the purpose of trying Starlink was because, you know, we do not really have good access to like 5g we're going to try to see if t-mobile will um allow us to try it out here in their 5g internet unlimited 50 or 60 bucks a month and they got like a 1.2 terabyte i guess limit and before they throttle you down and we probably use about 800 gigabytes a month streaming we got five people in the family streaming a lot do a lot of uh, internet shopping and even walmart delivery groceries and everything online so a lot of the services only offer you know 60 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes and then you have to pay you know basically repay to get another 100 gigabytes of data and we really do not want to spend 800 dollars plus every month trying to um have service there are fiber lines um nearby from our dsl service our windstream kinetic formerly known as altel and um they have installed them on the cell towers and uh but the technician i talked to yesterday said that the actual cell tower owners or whatever providers i don't know if it if it's verizon or, or how that works paid for the whole installation you know to be installed um on the tower so it's it's not that our provider is just giving them you know running the fiber for free to their their towers and just selling them the internet um but there are fiber lines like 200 feet from us and, and this tech actually told me it's not their fiber lines. It's just, a you know, another contractor running fiber everywhere and that they're probably going to cell phone towers as well. And we were, anyway, we were looking to be able to upload higher speeds, you know, for YouTube, maybe to start shooting 4K video a lot more and um, doing all that stuff. And Starlink, even, even with, the instability in this area here with the trees uploaded probably about four times faster and i don't think i got any errors where it aired out you know there are probably times when the service was interrupted but it was able to keep going when the when the connection was re-established and it always seemed to upload the videos versus windstream which would air out a lot take four times longer per video and if it aired out enough it would actually not resume the upload we'd have to re-upload a video two or three times or more and it might take two or three days or more to upload just a, a 1080p video so if our entire purpose was to 
just upload on YouTube and even streaming videos. It seems like Netflix and a lot of the streaming services we use, they cache a lot of the data. So if the service is interrupted for, you know, a few seconds, 10 or 15 seconds or whatever, uh, for the most part, there was no buffering, you know, and, and we got 300 megabits or more in the mornings. And uh, when the peak peak time, internet peak times and later on in the afternoon, we'd still get, you know, probably between 40 and like 90 megabits per second. So the, if that's their throttling, that's still a really nice speed. However, we have Wi-Fi calling and there is no caching. It's real time. As soon as the service is interrupted for a second or five seconds or whatever, the calls are dropped. Video conferencing, I guess, I don't know if it's Zoom or whatever Natalie uses for our doctor's appointments and stuff. We were able to make like zero video conference calls on the service and it's just interrupted too much. And there is nothing, I guess, in the software that holds on to the connection and says, okay, let's wait and see if this connection comes back for you know five seconds or whatever. So it, it drops immediately as soon as it loses, it gets interrupted. And that just wouldn't work for us. And you know, like I said, we need, we need to be able to do the real time video conferencing, Wi-Fi calls and streaming and have somewhere around a terabyte of data every month. How does the speed compare to our DSL? Well, we have 30 megabit DSL with like a two megabit or slightly less upload. And, um, um when you run a speed test on the 30 megabit it might be 10 megabits it might be 14 18 22 it might hit 27 sometimes hardly ever like anywhere near the 29 or 30 megabits but if you compare that even to like our slowest starlink speed starlink you know like i said at peak times was probably lowest at about 40 megabits and that is the speed test not just the rated speed of the line so it, it is way way faster than the crappy dsl so yeah i mentioned talking to a tech yesterday because guess what as soon as we um disconnected starlink we had a problem with our dsl and i think we had a problem last month we were just ignoring it because we were trying out starlink and our dsl kept cutting out cutting out cutting out we called tech support several times they rebooted the router a few times and rebooted it on their end and after so many attempts they said you know we're sending a tech out so you, you do at least have techs that come out and fix the problem at least temporarily it, sometimes it only lasts a couple weeks sometimes it may last a few months before you get any major issues but it sort of stabilizes it despite being slow and despite probably going to you know having problems with uploading on youtube especially large video files if our time didn't run out or if we didn't have to pay for like you know almost 700 dollars worth of equipment you know and just had to pay the the 120 a month for internet we might have tri trialed it a little bit longer and tried to cut some of those more trees in the northeast to open the sky but as I said, this isn't a review on Starlink because I think in the right circumstances, it's you know blazing fast compared to DSL. Um, getting between 40 megabits and uh, 314 megabits per second is so much faster than having about an average of like 18 to 22 megabits on a 30 megabit DSL connection. Right now, there's basically a race between Starlink having double the satellites, which may make, uh, may allow us to be connected uninterrupted for like 99.999% of the time in the next two or three or five years once they get all those satellites up. And, you know, when is Windstream gonna have fiber here, fiber optic gigabit internet and possibly expanded 5g coverage you know being an option well that's it you know there's i have nothing bad to say about starlink i think it's amazing you know if it works for your family your business or whatever it's it's a great option sometimes for people and hopefully this clears up 
you know anything that was misconstrued as starlink you know my previous videos about taking down starlink or cutting trees for starlink yada yada um hopefully they weren't this wasn't misconstrued as being a review it's it's like how it works for our area for our family you know the types of things that we need in our internet service and um i guess that's it so take care guys